Okay, basics of laser cooling. Laser cooling sounds awesome. You, you heat things up with laser, you burn things with laser, but cooling with laser is amazing. Very basic principles. You do know that atoms have energy levels. So an atom, for example, hydrogen, you have n equals one level, which is n equals two level, which is the ground state. This is the first excited state n equals 3 level and you have multiple levels so that's that this is the en increasing energy axis you also know that in presence of electric fields and magnetic fields the energy level is split so you can have this energy level going to say for example two le different levels this one going to three different levels this one going to five different levels and it could go crazy this is just an example and then you, you can have even further splitting of the energy levels depending on what it is exactly. So you have all these different energy levels. In quantum mechanics, the cool thing is you can't simply have any energy. You have to have one of these energy. Now, say you're sitting in this level right here. And now I give you a kick. Well, if I give you a kick worth that much, you can't kick it. It's impossible to kick the atom from here to here because... There is no allowed energy level here. You have to have enough power in your kick to push it from here to there. Simply, you just can't possibly do it. This is quantum mechanics. So you need to give it enough kick. You can give it kick from here to there, here to there, any allowed states. So you could have atom go from here to there, and so on. So that's one part of it. Second part, light is made up of photons. Photons are particles of light. Photons carry energy. Their energy is H, F, where F is the frequency of that light. Photons carry momentum. Momentum of the photon is H bar K. All right. So they have energy, they have momentum. Cool. Now think about this scenario. Say you have a particle traveling that way and it's currently located in this state state initial I and then you send a photon from the other side with energy this much I'll call it E gamma energy it, the photon has just enough energy c to kick the atom from this state to that state. Alright, so when they meet, this photon will get absorbed by the atom, and the atom will be in that higher excited state. Okay, so this is the final state of the atom. So here is my final atom. Here is the velocity of the final atom, and now it's in the excited state. But conservation of momentum tells you that if this was the initial velocity, because you you gained some momentum from the photon, so your momentum actually decreased or increased in this side. So conservation of momentum tells you that your final momentum is the initial momentum, initial momentum plus the momentum gained by the photon which is in the opposite direction so your final momentum is actually li less so your final velocity is actually less than the initial velocity now imagine it, it it turns out the momentum that photon carry is very small compared to this massive momentum that particles have from the velocity at room temperature so how you would need millions and millions upon these collisions to slow down a particle but imagine you could do it you had if you had a laser with just the right frequency just the right energy and you just keep bombarding the particle with photons and each photon delivers tiny bit of momentum then you could potentially go down 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 and potentially go to very very low temperatures micro kelvin temperatures milli kelvin temperatures so this is the basics behind laser cooling. Obviously, there are more complications. For example, when the atom is traveling, it sees 
this photon blue shifted because the photon is traveling towards it it's traveling towards the photon so it's blue shifted so the as it slows down this photon's energy will change it won't it will not be in resonance with this energy shift so it the photons will become see-through because photons will have for example this much energy instead of the required energy so the photons can't kick the atom they will just pass right through it that's one complication and there are multiple complications the first guy who did this got a Nobel Prize Stephen Chu and currently now this has become very simple and uh, almost everyone in atomic physics does it